Everest. Greetings, I'm Shad. And you know, there is so much in medieval fantasy that we just kind of take for granted. And honestly, when we look at a more realistic sense, it might actually be quite different or more difficult. This is that one of the purposes of this series of doing functional fandom. Now in this episode, I actually want to see how easy it is, okay, to shoot, you know, a bow, but not just any bow, an actual war bow, all right, something of real high poundage from a tree. You know, the, the common classic stereotypical thing that we often see in fantasy, elves doing, rangers doing stuff, they often shoot from trees. But not only that, also crouching down and from cover. Now, obviously people have done this before, it's clearly not impossible, but one of the things I think people are missing is the power of the bow. Because when you ramp up the poundage of the bow you're shooting, it actually changes a significant number of things. For instance, your posture. When you pull a heavy warbow back, this one here is a hundred pounds draw weight, which is more than double the average weight that a lot of just normal target archery bows shoot at, okay? Olympic is between 45 and 70, 70 is like the top, top range. And when you're in the warbow category, you're looking at 70 pounds to up to 200 pounds. The more base average, generally, people think, is 100 to 140 pounds is the average of the medieval period, all right? So this one is 100 pounds. Now, when you get to that level, you just can't shoot it from any kind of position, right? To fully draw this bow, it requires a compound movement where I can engage my back muscles to get it to full draw. So look what I just did. I, I need to lean down. I'm going to lean into the bow to fully draw this, right? And when I do that, right there, that's full draw, okay? to the ear. I can't draw it that far back just standing up normally or even crouching down, okay? And in fact, crouching down might make it that I'll be unable to draw this bow at all. We'll find out. And so I'm going to get to test it because this is the level of bow that adventurers would logically and should logically have. And this is where I get really annoyed in a lot of pop culture movies, unfortunately even Lord of the Rings. The bow that Legolas is using, just by the fact you can tell the weight of the bow just by how people draw it, okay? If you can draw a bow, let me, let me change bows just for a minute. This is honestly the type of bow that we see a lot in movies. In actual fact, it still might be even greater because they don't want the actors to tire out. And so the poundage of those bows, I think are like five, 10 pounds. This one is one of the lowest ones I have. It's for kids. Well, actually it's a little, it's intermediate for kids. It's a 30 pound bow, really, really light though. Okay, now watch how I can draw this because it's so light. I can do this. This is a bad way to draw a bow. It's all on the shoulder, okay? If I tried to draw my war bow, just like, oh, let's do like that, I could injure my shoulder. <laughs> They're, all the strain is on the shoulder like that, but I can do it with this because it's so light. And so when you see people, like in fantasy, and it's funny, the more I've learned about historical medieval archery, the more this stands out to me because I know how much power is actually in a proper war bow, right? So much so that I can see it just by the way people draw the string, literally. And so if you see someone there and it's like, oh, let's shoot. Especially if they just hold the string back like this for ages, which we see all the time, right? Where they're just like, you know nothing, Jon Snow. Blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna talk to you for a whole, yeah. just like this. For ages and ages, the bow is garbage draw weight if they're doing FH. And that, that breaks my immersion. And if you know anything about bows, it'll break your immersion as well, because these are supposed to be warriors, adventurers. Adventurers are fighting monsters, really thick hide, and also enemies wearing armor, bandits, any type of thing, right? Enchant like undead or whatever, like, so many things, right? Where adventurers are fighting monsters. They are gonna need a war bow level bow to do the adequate amount of damage. It's flat. And so when I see Legolas just doing these, oh, look at this, I'm shooting like this. Just shoo, shoot, shoot, oh, shoot. Oh, it's like, ah, oh, come off it. Compare, just compare this to doing this to the posture I need to adopt on the war bow. So, just do it. <laughs> Let me show you how far I could draw it back just doing this, ready? <laughs> Nothing, all right? This is why I feel this is important if they portray this in fantasy better, where if you see a good choreography where someone throws a punch and it feels like it has power, the person reacts and throws back from it, and it's like, that was powerful, right? 
this posture conveys the same kind of feeling. And so watch me shoot an arrow, right? Just because of the posture I adopt and the strain I put into it, and how difficult it is to pull back, right? This is going to convey power. And again, just look at the posture. I need to lean forward, I'm gonna go back and shoot. Do you see when you're like that? When you, and even on front on, you can see the posture, right? Conveys power. This is simply just about learning the correct techniques, okay? And it conveys more realism and authenticity now because even with this weak bow, I can adopt the posture like this. So have a look. If I want to pose with the posture of a real wall bow, like this, I'm leaning into it even though it's weak, it's nothing, right? I'm acting, I'm pretending it's a lot harder to pull back, right? If actors did that, it'll convey you know, how powerful this bow should be. Not only actors, this should be what should be shown in video games. One of the most immersion breaking, <laughs> it's a horrible game anyway, <laughs> so it's just like cherry on top. Boulder's Gate Dark Alliance, the new one. It is garbage tier game. Reviews is just, it, like it's horrible. But one of the, like, out of all the dumb bad things in it, kind of the cherry on top for me was the animation of the archer in it. Derp, 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 derp. Nothing is happening in her body, it's just arm movement, just like this. And everything else is almost frozen. It's the most garbage animation ever. It doesn't convey the power that should be in this war bow to be able to take out big guys in armor and things. Absolute garbage. And so this is also kind of a message for game developers. If you want proper animation, all right, it's, all, it's, it's as simple as just posing right when you put the bow in the character's, in the character's hands. Where well, you're just there, and they're, they're wanting to shoot, there's a powerful shoot. There's actually a number of ways, okay? You can lean forward, see like this, where I lean forward like that, or you can lean to the side. You can angle the bow this way, depending on which side you have the bow. Doesn't matter which side you do it, there are pros and cons, okay? So it should never say it's universally on the inside, universally on the outside. I prefer the outside. For a number of reasons i've done a whole <laughs> there's like if you're not aware there is a saga <laughs> about that which side you can logically shoot a medieval war bow from right like which side of the bow and then the posture okay where you lean in and then you arc your back you go out and usually you pull down it's a compound movement see both arms pulling pull down like that and you're like that See, can you see the power that's just there like whoa right that's the posture video games should be using Let's see if I can actually get into the correct posture enough to pull back a war bow from a tree, just crouching down, and also from cover. All right, so luckily we have a safe kind of fallen down tree that's close to the ground, so we don't have to risk any real injury. But it also represents a lot of kind of positions or branches that you might need to climb onto. The easiest one here is obviously this one here. Big, kind of horizontal branch where I can just get up here, and I'm an elf or a ranger in a tree scoping down the enemies below. Before I even begin, a discussion should be had on the uh, efficacy of shooting from a tree. Granted, it gives you a much larger field of view. That's an advantage, but it also restricts your mobility. You're a pretty still stationary target in this tree. You might get a bit of cover. And so as soon as your position is revealed, you know, is it really worthwhile? If you can take out your enemy, whoever you're scouting, with a good shot for up here, you're just like, aha, there he is. You get it on the string. Let me just get the position right. Get on the string and you, you take him out. All right, granted. But if you miss and they start shooting back, having said that, if they don't have any ranged weaponry to fire back at you, you're pretty safe. And if they can't climb the tree, if they don't have the equipment, okay, there might be something to the tree thing. They could just run away. <laughs> then if they run away, you can keep shooting until they're out of range, and then that, you're gonna have to get down off the tree, of course. Do you have something to say, Oz? Yeah, I was gonna say, but if they have uh, ranged equipment, you're screwed. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like, if they can shoot back at you, you might be wholly screwed. They could gain cover, because they can move around, get cover behind a tree, and you're like, jab, 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 you know? The other thing is balance, but I'm not like a dexterous elf, right? Okay, we already saw from the cold open, I can draw, I can get in the position I need to, to draw this bow from up here, okay? So if I had someone, my range is a bit limited. Like, 
shooting directly down, I won't be able to draw this bow properly. Shooting directly down. Like, watch, ready? I'm gonna, I'm doing both arms, right? And so let's see if I can even shoot directly down. I can't fully draw it. So, if I'm trying to shoot at monsters, thick hide, armor, this is really limiting me. Obviously, when you're up a tree, you're gonna be shooting downwards. Now, there is a certain angle. Well, actually, let's find out. What angle downways can I manage while still fully drawing this while on a flipping log? Because the natural trajectories you can adopt with the posture you need to fully draw a really powerful bow is usually straight or up, okay? Angling around, if you want an angle, you can only do so much before you need to realign your feet. Problem with being in a tree, your feet are kind of stuck where they are. And so reorienting your angle of shooting just on this horizontal trajectory is gonna be a real problem. But let's do first uh, a better, better case scenario, okay? Where I can shoot downways a bit and uh, let's see, fully drawing, trying to keep my balance at the same bloody time. Holy crap, right? Okay, so, uh, that was full draw. And that was only, that was still almost horizontal. Let's try it again and I'm gonna try and angle it even lower. Now the thing is, starting high and pulling down is the right kind, it's a very helpful movement to get to full strength because it engages your back muscles, it engages more of your muscles, right, and you're pulling down. Um, and so I'm gonna start high, pull down, but then try and angle low at full draw. Full draw, angle, oh! Wow, that was interesting. I I got to there, as soon as I started to lower, the stress in my muscles went up almost exponentially to the point where it's like, my muscles noped out. Release <laughs> before you injure yourself. The other thing is, the string hit my bloody leg as well. It's not a convenient or natural angle to shoot at, which actually puts some problems in uh, sh from shooting a tree angling downways. It is almost amazing how difficult it is to shoot a war bow from that angle. And so much, so many fantasies completely disregard this fact because they just pretend the war, the bow, every, the adventurer can pull back the bow no matter what. But in reality, a war bow is a different beast, and the difficulty to pull the thing realistically should be taken account of, but it's always disregarded. Which is why I, why I wanted to do this video. So I'm going to get into a couple of different positions in the tree, and we're going to try out how well I can draw it from different postures and sitting positions even, and. It, also, just to let you know, this, I'm wearing my, kind of like my Ranger loadout. Uh, if you're wondering what I think the best weapon, why I think this is the best loadout for Ranger, where bow with, uh, I don't have a falchion, my machete is like my stand-in for a falchion, but not a big hand of sword, falchion for a Ranger. Check out my video on best weapons for a classic fantasy Ranger and why they're underrated. Rangers are cool. Um, do, you reckon, do you reckon that would be my class? I, I, if I became an adventurer, but thing is, I like my big sword. I'm like, even as an adventurer, I want the big sword to handle the gobbies, goblins. And so maybe still, because the rangers can be good swordsmen, but let me know, am I a ranger? I like knights. The thing is, though, knights can wear brigandines, okay, and use a bow, but I do love the bow. Like, I love the bow. Do I like camping and what? See, I don't think like, I, I, I'd want the skills to survive in the wilderness. But I wouldn't want that to be my thing. <laughs> like, that's a ranger's thing. I'd, I'd like to be an adventurer, you know, travelling, but I'd probably I'd stick to roads. I'm, I'm weak, I suppose. Roads and inns, right? Get some comforts. Anyway. All right, let's get in the tree. What if I was leaning against a branch like this? I was in a tree, because if you're up a tree for a while, you're going to want to rest a bit. You want to get in a posture. <sighs> Maybe. For safety, I'm not even going to put a string on, oh, sorry, an arrow on the string. I'm just going to try and draw the bow from this position. Oh, that's full, full draw. Okay, good. <laughs> we run into that same problem of aiming downwards. I'm going to go full draw, because what will probably happen, right, is you need to do full draw, holding the bow more horizontally, angle down for us at, just to get into, and you're not going to have much time to line up the shot because as soon as you angle down the strain goes up so much so you just gotta angle down and release and shoot oh 
Oh yeah, that, that worked. Okay. Moving at that angle. This actually isn't a bad angle. Okay. It's a bit better, a bit better. Um, let me get into a crouching down position. That's one of the more classic positions for elves and rangers and stuff from a tree. All right, so new position. And uh, does this really look like I'm high up in a tree? Like, like, you know, here's another big problem shooting from a tree. Bloody branches, it's everywhere. Like I want to raise my bow so I can pull down, pull down. I, it's so hard, right? I'm getting caught on branches everywhere. So the other thing, longbow, if you're going to be shooting from up trees, longbow is probably not the best pick. I'm going to switch to my shorter, smaller bow, lighter poundage, and, um, and we'll be able to test things because we could represent or pretend that I am twice as strong as I am and the lighter bow you know, it's actually pretending, we're pretending that it's a much higher poundage and I can just draw it easier and we'll see about angles, okay? Um, but just from here, with this bow, and don't worry, it's not on the string, I'm not risking my cameraman or anything. Getting full draw. Oh, it's possible. The strain, like angling it down, the muscle that strains the most is one right here on the side. Oh. So you can do it, it's possible, so you can angle down. With, basic, like, honestly getting to the cheek, between the cheek, as soon as you, if you at least get to the cheek, that is considered full draw. And even with a war bow, sometimes even I only draw to the mouth when I need to. So I think, that, like, but if you're getting short of the mouth, that's not full draw. But okay. All right, well, let's see how many angles I can get with a smaller bow, because this, this could actually be something that answers a cultural kind of thing as to what type of bows, say, elves use if they shoot from trees a lot. A big long bow, like the medieval type adventurers, you know, rangers and stuff will be doing. Well, if the ranger is in a tree a lot, he'll probably run into this problem as well. But for medieval uh, soldiers and stuff, they'd be fine with a, a, a long bow, war bow level strength. But for elves, they might actually use shorter, smaller bows, but you can still get ridiculously high poundage small bows, all right? But let's switch it up. All right, smaller bow. Automatically, it's still getting caught on things, but not nearly as much. And so just for convenience, I think elves, if they're gonna be shooting from trees a lot, shorter bows. Makes sense for them to be recurved, get a bit more power and stuff. Uh, what would they be made out of? A lot of times, really high powerful smaller bows, and you'd be looking at almost the Asiatic style at this point. But granted, there were some examples of recurve, laminated style bows, even in Europe area, medieval Europe and, and earlier. And so they're not out of the ordinary for a medieval setting. But okay, let's pretend I was twice as strong. And uh, how easy is it? Like, because this bow, like, oh, cake. It's almost like any angler, right? here, here. You can even go way over there. Up, down, around, angle, uh, like there. Cake, cake. There is one interesting thing that um, we'll, we'll test now, okay? So I'm up this tree, but I need to crouch down. So I'm gonna go right here, all okay? right? The crouching position. Whew. I don't think I'm, there's no chance I'm gonna be able to draw my war bow from this position. We'll try. So ridiculously more awkward just because of the size of the bow. But from this position, and pretend, even if I was on the ground like this, okay? Draw. <laughs> it's amazing how difficult this is, isn't it? like from this position. <laughs> now granted, I, that's probably maybe 70 pound I reach, but again, I'll get more power out of just a 70 pound bow that I could fully draw. I've got a 70 pound long bow with us. Let's give it a go. So from this position, Let's see if I can fully draw 70 pound. That was actually pretty easy, okay? So for me, 70 pound is still war bow range. So for me, if I knew I was needing to shoot from a, this position, and by the way, if I was shooting from this position, obviously the arrow needs to be on the, over the knuckle, on the inside of the bow to rest on top of the bow. If you do it over the thumb on the outside, it's just like, it's not, it's gonna, maybe you get it work. I know uh, Lars Anderson can, because he's a legend, but um, very difficult. So, all right, from this position, all right, 
this, the only problem I have is not my ability to draw it, but that's hitting my body. So if I maybe really needed to shoot and I was leaning down, I would have to go up like this to get full draw. Yep, you can do it. Not a problem. I was showing that I could show, shoot at multiple angles with that really weak bow. This is still technically in the lowest end of war bow range. And let's test angles. Down it, oh, well, it's harder aiming down, but I could hold it easier. There's less strain than there. But I am, man, because it's a long bow, the limbs are hitting the branches so much more. With the shorter bow, I would be able, because we saw it, with the shorter bow, I was able to angle it over here that way. Because this long bow, it's getting caught. And so a 70 pound short bow would do the job. Long bows are just too inconvenient for when you're in trees. But I think we've been, not that I think, we've learned a lot. I know I have actually, just from trying it out in real life. There are some significant limitations. And so shooting the bow that's up there at your comfortable limit, not your ultimate limit, but my comfortable limit is 100 to 105 pounds right now. It's too impractical when you're up a tree to get the right angles. And so I need to jump down a couple of pounds to 70 pounds, but I can angle this, or I can draw this bow at so many more awkward angles because it's easier. So even just aiming down, watch. I won't even raise high to draw. Aiming down, draw, full draw, even aiming. So yeah, you need to go a couple, couple of levels down. There we go. Well, there's a couple other things to quickly test. We're kind of do crouching down, but we'll, I'll do it on the ground and also from cover. All right, crouching down. Now, we already kind of realized from the tree that shooting from a crouching down position just puts you in a posture that you can't draw a bow back to the limit you, you comfortably can. I mean, let me test it because the problem is the arrow, you know, the bow, but if I hold it up a bit, maybe, let's, uh, Let's give it a go, just to see if I can get in the... <sighs> yep. Oh man, that went, that went so far. <laughs> All right. Now, I felt like that got full draw. Yeah, I can, I can reach that. So, shooting up in an arc, definitely. But, getting lower, okay? What if I really want to get low? Like, what if I wanted to stay behind this cover? And so, you know, I'm shooting here, let's see, like, I would need to, like, because I, I needed to get up like this, so depending on what level of cover and what level you're willing to expose yourself, it depends. So, let me pick a nicer arrow. All right, holding the bow sideways is obviously the way that you do it, but you can't get really full draw. So if I wanted to get up, I could reach full draw from this position, as we saw. And I reckon I can get mostly flat. But when you really, if I wanted to stay behind cover while I'll shoot, and interestingly enough, I reckon I could shoot through this bramble bush. Let's try this, right? The blackberries, you call them brambles, where you're from? So pretend there was an enemy right through this bush. I reckon the arrow will sail through it pretty easily. This is just a test if the arrow will go through easily. And because there's heaps of blackberries off where I'm shooting, I don't want to lose the arrow. So I'm going to do a light weak shot just so the arrow drops and we can find it easy. So I'm just going to go like, if I was like here, I need a... All right, do you see where, oh, I can see where, good. We didn't lose the arrow. Okay. I did something interesting then. To, to maintain your low position, you obviously need to angle the bow. People naturally, and more commonly, do it this way. Where, and I feel the string hits your body really easy when you, and this is me shooting on the ins, inside, the way that I don't usually prefer. And so if I'm like this, and I wanted to just get up or down, like, oh, it is so much harder to draw. Um, just a minute. If I had a proper sheath, this wouldn't be as problematic. My machete's getting in the way. All right, so 
like oh, I'm getting tired as well. This is hard. <laughs> so that's a problem. But this is the advantage of shooting on the outside because you'll be surprised how much I can angle the bow this way and still shoot safely. I can shoot safely this way. I'm not recommending everyone try it. But for me, if I was like this, go like this, and let's see what drawer I could reach, even angling it like this. Full draw, basically. Let's, uh, let's see, ready? Even angling it almost like this. Look at that, ready? So, facing the camera, ready? All right. No overstrain on my body. In fact, I can feel more strain and danger when I'm trying to shoot this way like that than like that. So interestingly enough, even shooting on the outside of the bow, you can still angle it pretty darn flat or close to and get a good, good heavy draw on it. You learn something, don't you? Man, I've, it's so interesting. I've, I've legitimately learned a lot just by trying this out in real life, okay? So, I can shoot at my comfortable limit, crouching down at the right posture. I needed to angle my bow like that to do it. And for me, I couldn't do it angling it that way. If I was shooting this way, crouching down, I'd need a lighter poundage bow to get full draw. But I could, maybe it's because I'm used to it. Really interesting. We learned some really interesting things about shooting from a tree, right? So, I had heaps of fun. I hope you have as well. And of course, thank you for watching. Hope to see you on the next video here on Shadowversity, where we do any number of things, where we Functional fandom, try things in real life, fantasy rearmed, right? Uh, pop culture weapons analyzed, all that stuff. And if you're interested, why not subscribe, right? Don't miss out on one of the, any of the future videos. Hope to see you there, and until then, farewell.